we're going to start doing the foot in the middle of the stem. While be careful, while being careful, and trying not to break my ring. Which will help if I use my tiny little pattern tool. Now, doing this sort of turning is a perfect opportunity to practice and make awkward and different shapes. You can experiment to see what you come up with, like this. Well, there you go. We have the foot and the centre of the incense stick holder, as you can see. Now, we'll get the sanding started and finish shaping and sanding this bit of it, and then I'll oil it and get it ready for taking off the lay. Now, we will show you what it looks like when I remove the bit of tape gently from this ring.
I'm only doing this one handed. That's what it looks like. There's the ring, see? Now it's just a matter of sanding it up and cutting it off after I've oiled it. And then we have an incense stick holder which we just got to drill a hole in the end because it's only holds one incense stick. About a three mil, probably a one eight or something like that, not too big. Because incense sticks sticks are all different thicknesses when you generally get them. So you need a fairly decent size hole to accommodate ones that are probably a little bit too thick than normal. Well, we'll get back to this now and finish off setting up the sanding and then we'll do the oil. Well, I'm just doing a bit of 400 grit paper sanding, then I'm going to um, coat it with some sanding sealer that I make from the shellac beetle flakes and methylated spirits. Now I am actually going to drill the hole for the incense stick bit through where the tailstock spike is and when I've done that I'm going to sand it off all nice and round on the end by hand. But before we can do that I've got to trim this down so I can part it off and take the finished object off the lathe, sand the bottom up by hand on my hand sanding table. And then we have a finished item to show and put on display or put up for sale. Well, I'm going to get ready and set up my sanding sealer stuff and paint some on it and we'll show you what it looks like when it's been through the sanding sealer process. Well, I'm ready to Give it a coat of sanding sealer with a paintbrush and slowly turn the lathe around as I do it. I'm going to do probably three or four, maybe five coats of this stuff. And now I can't tell you what this wood is, I don't even know myself. All I can tell you is I picked it up when it was green and I dried it out over a few years. And a lot of my bits of wood. That's how I've got them, is from collecting branches off of trees. Pieces at least a good five foot long. Then putting them in a cool spot to dry. Well, the best time to do that, collecting branches from trees for wood turning and making stuff out of... I suggest you do it when it's the wet weather sort of season, cold and that. Because you're going to have a better chance that the wood is going to survive for you. To be able to make things out of Well, that's one coat of my sanding sealer. Just make sure I covered every last bit of it. Now we'll get a bit more quickly and give it a nice sort of a wet coat. Which means I'm going to drench it as much as I can get on there because it's absorbing it and soaking it up very quickly. Now this will preserve this piece of wood for a lifetime. It's come up quite nice hasn't it?
Now I'm going to let that soak in and dry. Then I'm going to give it a light sand with some finer paper than what I used, a bit of 600. And then I'm going to coat it with some Danish oil or tongue oil or something over whatever, more than like the Danish oil, which we'll come back and do later. We have a finished incense stick holder with the ring. It's only been sort of satin like polished up with Danish oil and my homemade sanding sealer and a bit of buffing wax and that's about it. Now what I've got to do now is I'm going to part off at the bottom and then I've got to take it over to my drill press and drill a maximum of a 3mm hole down in probably an inch, maybe an inch and a half at the most should be plenty. Now I'm going to go ahead and part this off ready to finish the bottom up and the top. Now I am ready to cut that off there with my tenant saw and then finish off the bottom of it, the foot underneath it and make it look nice and dressed up. And we'll get that done now, I'll just organise my tenant saw and we'll quickly saw it off. While gently turning the item round and slowly sawing through it. And a tenant saw is better than a hacksaw. Hacksaw blades leaves cut the coloured stain from the paint on them and they can also break while you're trying to do it. This way. Well we've got that piece cut off. I've just got to move my tail stock back and take it out of the way. and finish gently sawing that bit off. Now we've got to sand this bit up finish setting up the hole in the top of it for the incense stick holder or the incense stick itself and hand sand the tip bit of it and put some oil on it and make it look nice. Then we have an incense stick holder ready to go on display or up for sale. Well when we finish this we'll do a better view of it for you. Well we have a finished incense stick holder with the ring on it as you can see and there's the hole that the incense stick goes into there's the bottom of it and that was made from a piece of recycled timber that someone cut out of their tree and I dried over five years before I could turn it. And I have lots like that for making lots of projects. Thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed and I hope in the future you'll watch more of them. Bye for now.